Okay, the set is always the stuff from our actual classwork task. And this is our new material, what is an inverse function? And the definition of an inverse function is where we literally just switch the X and the Y. Or another way of saying it would be to switch the domain and the range. Or another way of saying it would be to switch the input and the output, et cetera, et cetera. So it's basically saying I literally take all my X's and they become Y's and all my Y's become X's. So in this first example here, it's giving me a list of X and Y pairs or coordinates. So I literally just flip it around, you guys. So my point, negative 13, 5, it just flips to 5, negative 13. That's it. The signs stay the same and everything. Negative 9, 9 turns into negative 9, negative 9 still. Negative 5, negative 2 flips to become negative 2, negative 5. Negative 1, negative 5 becomes negative 5, negative 1. 0, negative 4 becomes negative 4, 0. 4, 6 becomes 6, 4, etc. etc. So you're telling me, Ms. Sanchez, that if I have a list of ordered pairs, I just have to flip those to get the inverse? Yep. And we practiced in class on how to say this right here. This is called f of negative 1 of x. Repeat after me. f of negative 1 of x. Good job. Okay. Now, besides listing out coordinate pairs, sometimes we're going to be asked to graph inverses. So what are my steps for graphing an inverse? Okay. Steps. Step one for graphing an inverse is identify at least three points. I need three points on this graph in order to have three points to flip. So my original function is going to turn into my inverse function when I flip it, but I need three original points. So I'm going to go grab this point right here, this point right here, and this point right here. So that first dot, I'm going to go back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and up 2. So negative 7, 2, that's one of my coordinate pairs. The next point is back 1, down 2, negative 1, negative 2. And the next one is right 1 and up 1, 2, 3, wait, 1, 2, 3, 4. Right 1, up 4. So step one, identify at least three points on the original function. Okay, done. Check. Step two, flip the points. What do I mean? I mean your X becomes your Y and your Y becomes your X and those are your new points. So negative seven, two becomes two, negative seven. Negative one, negative two becomes negative 2, negative 1, and 1, 4 becomes 4, 1. All right, not bad. Pick some points, flip some points. I got this. 3, graph the new points. Okay, actually, I'm going to choose a different color for this. Let's go pink to make our new graph pink. No, let's go purple. The new flipped points. Okay, so my new dot, 2, negative 7, is going to go right 2, down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, my other dot is at back 2, down 1. And then my other one is at 4, 1. Okay, now you just connect those lines. And that's my inverse function. Kind of cool looking, right? Now, no inverse is done until you put that line of reflection on the graph. So then we graph the line of reflection, line through y equals x. And so I'm going to go put some dots. 
at 00-1122-3344. And then going backwards, negative, negative, negative. And then you can dash these or solid and highlight these, whatever you're comfortable with. So my line of reflection is the same on every single inverse graph. It's through y equals x. So we label this the line of reflection through y equals x. And I always like to highlight or dash that line to make it stand out. All right, so how do I graph an inverse? Identify three points. That was over here. Let's, let's highlight some steps here. Identify the three points. That was this part. Then we flip the points. That was this part. And then we graphed the points. And that was literally the purple graph over there. Finally, graph that line of reflection. We did last. And then if you haven't already, do you see how f of x was already labeled, but it was kind of like in the middle in a weird spot? So I'm going to label this guy over here f of x. And the new purple one, I'm going to label f of negative 1 of x so that it stands out. All right. How would you do? That's it. You graphed an inverse. Okay. Number 11. I'm going on a long trip to Barcelona, Spain. I'm only taking one suitcase and it's packed very full. I plan to arrive completely exhausted at my hotel in the middle of the night. The only thing I want to take out of my suitcase is a pair of pajamas. So when I pack my suitcase at home, did I want to put my pajamas in first, somewhere in the middle, or last? Pause the video. Think about it. Okay, if I'm planning to take my pajamas out first, I need to pack them last. Does that make sense to you? That's like us giving you a context that's not math related for inverses. How would I undo those packed pajamas? If I want to get to them first, I need to pack them last. Pajamas out first means pack them last. Okay. Write out the inverse function for the table of values. And so if my input is negative 10 and my output is negative 2, I'm going to flip those. It's kind of like saying x and g of x. So now this is going to become negative 2 and this is going to be negative 10. I'm literally just flipping them. Pause the video, continue the rest. Okay, let's see how you did. So now my top goes negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and my bottom goes negative 10, negative 6, negative 2, 2, 6. Notice that all my original inputs are now my outputs for the inverse function, and all my original outputs have now become my inputs of the inverse function. It's literally that easy. Use the points in problem 12. Graph g of x in black and g of negative 1 of x in a different color. Repeat after me. g of x, g of negative 1 of x. Okay, so in black first, I'm going to go graph the top one, negative 10. Oops. Negative 2. negative 6, negative 1, negative 2, 0, 
2162. Connect it. Okay, choosing a different color, I'm going to go blue. Please draw in g of negative 1 of x, negative 2, negative 10, old dot, new dot, old dot, new dot, negative 1, negative 6, 0, negative 2, 1, 2, 2, 6. Title this g of negative 1 of x. Okay, I just want to point something out. Look at your slope here. Do you see how the slope is up 1 over 1, 2, 3, 4? Up 1 over 4, up 1 over 4. The slope on g of x is 1 fourth. And then the slope on the other one is up 4 over 1. Up 4 over 1, up 4 over 1. It's the inverse or opposite of each other. Now last but not least I need to graph that line of reflection straight through the graph y equals x and you can dash it or highlight it. And then title that your line of reflection always going through y equals x. Okay, uh, last question says, is g of x a function? g of x would be a function if I do the vertical line test and it only touches once. So for example, if I draw a vertical line through the blue g of x, touches once, touches once, touches once. Yes, g of x is a function. Sorry, g of negative 1 of x is also a function. Uh, so therefore, it is a function. That's it. How'd you do? That's the set.